In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at how to work with data tables within Flutter. A data table is a widget that allows us to display information in the form of rows and columns. And today we're going to be building an application that is going to display to us a bunch of different coins and information related to them. And then we'll have the ability for some of these columns to sort the information in an ascending and descending manner, like so. And we're also going to be taking a look at how you can customize the information that is displayed within each cell of this data table. So before we begin with the coding process, I'd just like to quickly let you guys know that we are not going to be using any external packages or dependencies while building this project. And the reason for that is because the actual data table widget comes already packaged with the actual Flutter framework. So we don't have to include any third party package within our application to create these beautiful tables. So to get started, I've initialized an empty Flutter project. I've created a home page stateful class within this project, which for a build function returns a scaffold. And besides this, there's nothing else and we're going to be doing everything from scratch. The only thing that I'd like to do for now is to ensure that the target that I'm going to be testing my application on for now is going to be Chrome. But I'd just like to let you guys know that at the end, I'm also going to be showing you what simple tweaks you have to make to your data table so that it works on mobile devices as well. And data tables work generally across all of the different target platforms that Flutter supports. So you can build this application and deploy it on both desktop apps, mobile apps, as well as a web app. So I'll select Chrome here, and then I'll start debugging the application. And once the application is actually running and I have a Chrome window on my actual screen, then I will resume the video. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, the actual Chrome window has now appeared on my actual screen and we are now running the actual Flutter application within it. So the first thing that I'd like to do is even before we build our data table is to discuss where we're going to be getting the data from. In my case, what I'm going to be doing is actually creating a new file within the lib folder called the data.dar. And then what I'm going to do is basically copy and paste some information into this. And the code that I've copied and pasted in basically contains the definition for a class called coin. And this class basically specifies the different attributes that a coin can have. And these are going to map within the different columns we have within our data table. And then an actual list of coins, which basically has a bunch of different coin objects within it, each of which corresponding to a different cryptocurrency. For your convenience, what I've done is left a link to the source code down in the description below. So if you want access to this data.dart file, you can go ahead, click on it, download the source code, and then you'll have access to this data.dart file, as well as the complete source code for this application. And as always, if you're enjoying the video thus far, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So with this done, we are now finally ready to take this information and display this using a data table. For that, what I'm going to be doing is coming to the point where my build function for now returns a scaffold. And then here I'm going to be setting the body property to a call to a function called build UI. And I'd just like to do this because I'd like my code to be separated into different widgets. And it just makes it easy for me to understand what's going on. Once I've defined my actual build UI function which returns a widget, I'm going to say that the first thing that I'm going to return from this actual function is going to be a safe area widget. And then this safe area widget is going to contain a size box dot expand widget. And then the child for this is going to be an actual widget which is called a data table. And as the name suggests, the data table widget is what we use to then create a table and then display information within it. The data table requires us to pass it two things, which are the actual columns and then the rows that it's going to display. So let's do the columns part first. So for now, I'll set the columns to be an empty list and the rows to be an empty list. And with this, if we do command save and you come back, you can see that we're not seeing anything and it's giving me an error saying that columns cannot be empty. So what we have to do is for our data table to work, we need to at least define one column. Columns can't be an empty list. So let's do that. If I go ahead and take a look at my data.dart file, I can see that I want to display information for my coin, which is its ID, name, chain name, price, and the change in the price in the past 24 hours. So this means that I'm going to have five different columns within my actual data table. So for that, what I can do is actually come back and then go to the data table widget and see what the columns are. So basically the column needs to be a list of data columns. So what I'm going to be doing is basically doing the following where I'm going to be creating a function which is going to return a list of data column. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be called create columns, like so. And then I'm going to open up the functions definition. Within this, I'm going to do the following which is return a list. And this list is going to contain a data column. And the label for the data column is going to be an actual widget. But since I just want to display text for the label, I'll do a text widget. And the first column is going to be the ID column. There we go. So with this done, that's pretty much all we have to do. I'll add the semicolon at the end to command save, take this call to the create columns function, and then set this 
to be the actual columns like so and do command save. And as soon as I do this, you're going to see that now we are going to be kind of seeing a data table being displayed to us. But if I zoom into the application, you can see that we're seeing the actual ID column being displayed. So now what I'm going to be doing is going ahead and copying this data column four more times. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is the following. For the next data column, I'm going to say that it's going to be called name. After that, it's going to be chain. Then it's going to be price. And then after this, it's going to be the 24 hour chain. So for that, I can call it 24 hour change. There we go. Do save. And if I go back, you're going to see that now we're seeing these beautiful columns being displayed for my data table. So now the next thing that I'd like to do is actually take the data that I have within my data.dart file in the form of this coins list and then show that within this table. So for that, again, I'm going to be doing the following, which is that I'm going to go to my actual data table. I'm going to go to the rows property and I'll see that it expects us to pass it a list of data row objects. So as I had alluded to before, I'm going to be creating a function again. This function will return a list of data row and I'm going to say that it's going to be called underscore create rows. And then after this, I'm going to say that I'm going to open the function body up. And within this, we are going to be returning a list. But what list are we going to be returning? Well, the list completely depends upon the data that we pass it. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to the top of my homepage state class. And here I'm going to be creating a new list. And this list is going to be a list of coin objects. There we go. So this coin class actually comes from the data.dart file. And then I'm going to call this underdoor data. And I'm going to set this equal to a copy of the list that we have within our data.dart file called coins. So list.from coins. And the reason I'm just not directly accessing the coins list and I'm creating a copy of it and then I'm using the copy to display the information is because later on in the tutorial, we're going to be performing some manipulations on the list. And what I'd like to do is not alter the original data that we have. So for that, what I've opted to do is get the data, make a copy of it and do all of the modifications such as sorting and everything like that on the modifications. So with this done, let's do the following, which is to actually import the coin class and the coins list. And let's do command save. And with this done, I can take the actual underscore data. Let's come back to my create rows function. And here I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say that I'm going to take the data list. I'm going to map over each of the element and I'm going to convert each of the elements into an actual data row element like so. And then I'm going to convert the actual iterable that I get back to a list. Then here for the data row, it expects us to pass it a cells property. And this is basically as the name suggests the data for this row. So what are our cells going to be? Well, in my case, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to say that the cells are just going to be a list. And this list is going to contain only one cell within it. And that cell is going to be of type data cell. And then the child for this can be any widget, as you can see. So in my case, I want to display text. So I'm going to do text. And here, then I'm going to do the following, which is that since this is the first cell within our row, it's going to correspond to the first column and the first column is the ID column. So I'm going to do E dot ID dot to string. There we go. That's pretty much all we have to do. Let's do command save. Let's come back and we are not seeing anything still. And the reason for that is because we're not using the create rows function yet. So let's go back to our actual data table and replace the rows with a call to our function create rows. And now if I come back to my actual application, I expect to see an error. And the reason is because all rows must have the same number of cells as there are header cells. So basically what it's trying to say is that, hey, you guys have five columns, but you've only given me data for one column. So I can't display the information. So what I'm going to be doing is the following. I'll take this data cell and I'll copy it four more times. And then after this, I'm going to do the following, which is that for the next cell, after our ID, we're going to be displaying the name because the second column is going to be the name column. There we go, and we don't need to use toString on this because it's already a string. After that, the third column is going to be the chain name, so let's do that. Then the fourth column is going to be the price, so let's do c.e.price.toString. And then finally, the last column is going to be the change, so let's do change 24 hours. Let's do command save. And as soon as we come back, you can see that now our data table is being displayed and it's looking beautiful. But currently there is an issue with that data table and that is that I cannot scroll and look through all of the data. And the reason for that is, is because we have made our data table not scrollable. So to fix this, you can do the following, which is to actually come 
to where you're defining your data table. And then we can wrap our data table and you can do on an actual Mac control shift R or you can right click on this and then do refactor wrap with widget. And then this widget is going to be a single child scroll view. And then the axis that you want the app to single child scroll view to allow you to scroll on can be defined by using the scroll direction. So in this case, I want the actual table to be vertically scrollable. So I'll do axis dot vertical. With this done, now I can actually scroll through the data table and I can see information for all of the different coins. So the next thing that I'd like to do is basically for the 24 hour change column, I'd like to display this information here, but I'd like to change the text of the color to be red or green, depending upon if it was a positive or a negative change. So how can we do that? Well, it's going to be fairly simple. I can come to my create rows function. I can locate the actual data cell that's responsible for showcasing the information for the change. And then here I can say that the style is going to be text style. And then I'm going to say that the color is going to be the following, which is if our e dot change in 24 hours is greater than or equal to zero, then the actual color is going to be colors dot green. Otherwise, it's going to be colors dot red. There we go. And then it's giving me an error saying that the change dot 24 hours actually, there we go. And do save. And if I come back, there we go. Now our data table is displaying the actual change information in terms of texts, which are different color depending upon if the change were positive or negative. So now the final thing that I'd like to do is to actually show you guys how you can implement sorting on some of these columns so that when we click on the name of these actual columns, it actually sorts the information in a chronological manner, whether that's ascending or descending. So to do this, we're going to be doing the following. Firstly, I will go to the top of my class and here I'm going to basically define a Boolean variable, which is going to allow us to keep track of whether we have sorted the data in an ascending or a descending manner. So I'm going to call it underscore is sort and ascending. So if this is true. This means we're sorting in an ascending manner, otherwise a descending manner. And then after that, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to the point where we have our actual columns. So which of the columns would I like to make sortable? Well, in my case, I'd like to make the name, price, and 24 hour change columns the ones that I can sort data with. So I'm going to be doing that. So to get notified when somebody clicks on a certain column name so that the information that's being displayed in the table is then sorted according to the information within that column, we can actually define on our data columns a callback to a function called on sort. And it basically passes us two things. One is the actual column index. There we go. And the other is a property called ascending, but we're going to ignore it since we're using our own variable to keep track of whether we're sorting data in an ascending or a descending mirror. So firstly, let's do it with the name. So for name, I'm going to be doing the following. I'm going to say that if underscore is sort ascending is true, then I'd like to perform this logic. Otherwise, I'd like to perform some other logic. So what is the logic that I want to perform if we'd like to sort our data in an ascending manner? Well, in that case, I'd like to do underscore data dot sort. So the function is going to get past two values, A and B, and then we need to basically define what kind of an algorithm we're going to be using to determine if A is bigger than B or not. What I found out that what you can do is actually do A, which is the actual element within this actual data list, and B is going to be the same. In this case, since we're storing coin objects within our data list, it's going to be coin objects. I'm going to do a dot name dot compare to, and then I'm going to pass it the B dot name. And if you take a look at the compare to function, it basically tells you that it compares this string to the other and returns a negative value if this is ordered before the other, a positive value if this is ordered after the other, or zero if this and other are equivalent. So this is exactly the function that we need in order to determine if one value is different than the other. So that's why I've used a.name.compare to b.name. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So with this, we can do control save. And then the next thing that I'm going to be doing is going ahead and copying all of the logic that's within the on sort function removing it, calling set state, and then pasting the logic within that. And with this done, we can actually give a quick restart to our application, come back, and now if I click on the name, you're going to see that it's going to get sorted in a descending manner. There we go. But now what I'd like to do is when I click on it again, switch the order so that's in a descending manner. So how can I do that? Well, to do that, I am going to do the following in the else clause, which is to copy the same thing like so, but this time I'm going to do b.name compared to a.name. 
And that's pretty much all we had to do, and it's going to reverse the logic for us. And then finally, when we call the set state function, after we've done our sorting, what I'd like to do is update the sorting variable so that now it keeps track of the correct sorting order. So to do that, I'm going to do the following, which is underscore is sort ascending is equals to the opposite of is sort ascending. So if is sort ascending is going to be true, then it will become false. When it's false, it's become true. So we just set the opposite of it. And with this, we can do command save. And now if I come back, I can click on name, sorts it in a descending manner. If I click on name again, sorts it in a ascending manner, or first an ascending manner, then a descending manner. There we go. Now it works. So with this done, the next thing that I'd like to do is apply the same sorting logic to our price column and 24 our change column. So how can we do that? So to do that, I'll copy this on sort callback function. And then what I'll do is that for the data columns that do not require sorting, I'll mark them as const. And then same here for the text for the label. Then from the actual chain data column, I'd like to do the same thing, mark it as const. For price, I'll define the on sort callback function and then I'm going to mark the text as const and I'll remove this extra bracket that we have and then for the 24 hour change I'll do the same thing paste in the on sort function and then do command save and then mark the actual text variables for this as const there we go so with this done it's not going to work for now and the reason for that is because when we click on these columns it's going to sort the information for us, but it's going to sort the information based upon the actual column name. When we click on these columns, we want to sort the information based upon the price. And when we click on the 24 hour change column, we want to sort the information based upon the 24 hour change. So that's going to be fairly simple to do. All we're going to be doing is coming to the price one, and then we can use the compare to function on numbers as well. So here, what I'm going to do is a.price.compare to b.price. And then here I'm going to do b dot price compared to a dot price, and then do command save. And then I'm going to come to the data column for 24 hour change, and I'm going to do 20. And then here I'm going to do a dot change 24 hour compared to b dot change 24 hour, and then data dot sort b dot change 24 hour to a dot change 24 hour. There we go. That's pretty much all we had to do. So with this done, I can restart the application. I can come back and I can click on the price column now. And it's going to sort the price in an ascending manner and then in a descending manner. Same for the price in an ascending manner and then in a descending manner. So there we have it. Now we have implemented the ability to sort our data that's being displayed within our data column with regards to a certain column that we click on. So the last thing that I'd like to do is quickly run this application on an actual emulator and then show you that you're going to get a certain pixel overflow error due to the width that this data column takes and then how you can fix it. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, the application is now running on my Android simulator and I can see that I can scroll through the data table on a vertical axis, but because of the actual width of our columns and the amount of columns we have, not all of the data is being displayed within the complete width of our device's screen. So what I'd like to do is make this actual data table horizontally scrollable as well so that I can actually see the change 24 hour column as well, which is currently hidden. So how can I do that? And in some other cases, you might see a pixel overflow error where it's going to tell you that, hey, that data table is taking up more space than what's available on the screen. So the fixes for both of these issues should be to wrap the data table with a single child scroll view that allows the data table to be scrollable in a vertical direction. And then to wrap that single child scroll view, if you want horizontal scrollability as well, with another single child scroll view. This is the simplest way to fix this error. There are other ways that you can do it. There are other external packages that implement data tables in a way that you don't have to wrap them with single child scroll views. But this is the simplest way to get this Thing working. So for the other single child scroll view, I'm going to do scroll direction axis dot horizontal to command save. And now I have a data table that's vertically scrollable and horizontally scrollable. And the actual sorting logic still works on it on whatever columns I want to sort information with. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you learned a thing or two about how to work with data tables within Flutter. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.